Hey everybody, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atu here, and I am so, so, so excited because I have Nikki Cross on the show. Hi, hey! Nikki. Woo! <laughs> how <laughs> are you? I'm doing well, thank you so much. How are you, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing really well. I have, you know, I, it's day by day for me. We're all here in quarantine. Things are a little crazy, but you actually have a legitimate reason to be on cloud nine right now. As just a couple of nights back, you have officially won once again the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship titles with Alexa Bliss. So has it sunk in yet? How are you feeling? So for me, it was it was so funny because I actually tweeted this too. Um, you know, you the one, two, three happens, and, and you're you're celebrating in the ring, and you know in your head, okay, I need to like, I need to get up and do like a beauty show and have that like nice, uh, at, like the 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 picture of like getting hands raised and victory. But I was so, uh, it was the emotion was so there, like the emotion was so real and the emotion was so there, and I was kind of laughing when I like saw it because I was like I couldn't even stand up because I was just it was such a powerful feeling, um, and. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was very cool, and uh, and like, and now at two time uh, WWE champion, so I'm like, woohoo! Um, so for me, it was a very surreal feeling. Um, hasn't sunk in totally yet, but then it, it took a really long time, the first time we won the championships, uh, for that to sink in. So that took a really long time. So this will be the exact same. <laughs> I just think it's not only incredible that you've won once, but now twice, um, but it's absolutely amazing because you've been a fan of WWE since you were 10. Your dream was to have a title, and now you've not only done it once, but like I mentioned, twice. So uh, watching your emotions in the ring, like you just looked so weightless and happy, and you were right. It looked like you couldn't stand up because it was just, <laughs> you, were just so, <laughs> you were just so happy. And that's, you know, those genuine moments are what we love watching as, as fans and seeing our colleagues, you know, have those, those times. And those ugly cries are always really funny to watch. <laughs> those <laughs> ugly cries. And um, I was so proud of the match. And those are, uh, you know, um, being able to do this with Lexi. Um, and, you know, I could say so much, so many good things about Lexi. And getting to do that then with the K Kabuki Warriors. Um, it was just, I got to be in the ring with like three amazing talents. And um, I think we put on a match to be proud of, and this is still, you know, still a baby. This uh, tag division, um, it's still, you know, um, th this current because um, I know they had tag titles way back, way back then. So I know this is the current kind of uh, reincarnation. Um, so we're also just trying to, you know, we're going to keep trying to grow that and keep developing that, and um, so it's still a relatively new division. So it's almost like a little newborn baby that you're still trying to nurture, but it's kind of, you know, it's been a year, so it's like it's toddler stage. <laughs> like, so, you know. And I mean, it's funny that you mentioned how it's like a baby, because I've actually seen you stroke the belt once in a while. You treat yes. it like a little child. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, so it's actually somewhere, somewhere in this room <laughs> watching me. Well, some people are thrown into tag teams, and it just seems like the chemistry is completely off. But when it comes to you and Alexa, it seems like there is just chemistry from the get-go. So is that truly the case when it comes to you two, you and your best friend? Very much so. We're, uh, in a lot of ways, we're very, in, lo in a lot of ways, we're similar. Um, we have a lot of similarities um, on screen, off screen. Um, but then we actually, uh, I always call us like the oddball tag team because we have a lot of like differences as well. Like I'm very, uh, very easily excitable and very loud and obnoxious um, and really uh really loud and uh Lexi's very like relaxed and chilled out um so it's funny like our contrast and personalities and I think it makes for really good tv and it is very genuine and it's really it's really funny and it um we have a lot of great moments and being able to work with Lexi um she's helped me you know I came came from NXT in January of last year so that's been a full like uh, third, I can't count. Uh, it's been like fifteen months, um, yeah. and she's been so helpful and really guided me on a lot of things. And it's been really good to have her, and she's helped because I, I wrestled um, before coming to WWE um, and wrestled in NXT, and like you know learned learned a lot of different lessons there. And then you know when you move over to Raw and SmackDown, it's um, it's different again. So you have to transition again. Um, and she was there, kind of pretty much being my uh, angel on my shoulder, guardian angel, uh, whatever you want to call it, like under the wing. Um, and she's just helped me so much. So getting to experience this with her has been fantastic. Like it's, it's I couldn't have asked for, I couldn't ask for a better partner. 
like could not have asked for one. That's so lovely to hear because not only does it make your job so much easier actually teaming with someone you you genuinely like, yes. but it comes off, like you said, it makes for really good TV because watching it at home, you're like, these two are just friends. The camera's rolling. They're having a good time. And, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's fun. <laughs> I get to, I like it when I, when I try and catch it off guard. <laughs> <laughs> you do it a lot and it's I priceless. Try to, I try to make, I try to get a laugh, but she's got a good poker face. <laughs> Something you mentioned there is how you are very loud. You get energized super quickly. You're crazy in the best of ways. And so I was wondering, you know, some people are very calm and chill in the ring. You're an absolute firecracker. So is there something you do prior to actually running down that ramp just to get yourself amped? Is there something or is it just go time? It's go time. Uh, there's nothing really, you know, I actually had to cut back. I cut back a lot on my caffeine intake. Uh, oh, uh, December 19th. 2019 was the day I decided because I ended up it was um it was that kind of day where I was I was driving to see my friend who was two hours from Orlando uh d- drove there had a cup of coffee it was there all day chatting to her and drinking more coffee and she had one of those coffee machines with the jugs like, like not the cake right. ones so I ended up having like just coffee 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 and then I was driving home and I was like oh you know I'm gonna have a can of Red Bull oh that's a combo <laughs> So it was 11 o'clock at night and uh, Kelly and Demo comes in from filming a, a, a full sale and I'm just cha 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 like just jabbing in a way, chatting in a way, da 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 um, It's like three in the morning and he, you know, he can still hear me porter- pottering around downstairs. Um, I wake up the next day and I feel terrible. I feel so ill. I'm like, no. So from then on, I was like, I need to cut back on my caffeine intake. So since then, I've actually done really well. Um, I've cut it down to one cup of coffee a day and then a cup of decaf which is what I'm drinking now a little bit of decaf coffee what time is it 10 past two okay so that's it's okay, it's okay for decaf um so I actually had to like really cut down on my caffeine intake um and I feel so much better like I actually feel like a, a normal human being now um how you should process emotions probably um so in terms of psyching up for the ring um it's just I still get those butterflies and I still get that adrenaline rush and that'll probably and hopefully never go away. So for me, that's just when it's go time, it's like, boom. But it's yeah. so funny because see when someone actually sees me like chilled out and relaxed, they're like, is something wrong? And I'm like, no, I'm just <laughs> conserving energy because I know I'm going to be going uh, roller coaster soon. So, you know, there's definitely, I definitely do have my chilled out and relaxed moments, but it tends to be when I'm in my house, but like... <laughs> I'm in, in my house. Although I don't know if my husband would actually disagree with that, to be honest. He probably thinks uh, does he think you're always go, go, go? He thinks I'm, yeah. He 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 like catches me doing a lot of crazy things. Although he um had on my, my Yoda robe, my baby Yoda robe, and I was dancing to Tina Turner. Um and he like recorded it and he actually didn't post that. Like I was like, Oh, you can post it if you want to. And he was like, No, it's okay. So he catches me in the act of dancing and singing quite a lot. That's so cute. I mean, everyone watching right now, before we even started recording, Nikki was telling me how they just went for a really long walk and she was just jamming to some Sam Smith. (laughs) Dancing with a stranger. Ooh, what you made me do. I'm with somebody. I don't really really know the words, but I like the song. (laughs) It's a great song. (laughs) Sam Smith. Sam Smith. Love me He's a great time. artist. I mean, I want to get into a little bit of music and television with you because I know those are two huge passions of yours. But before we do, um, there's mm-hmm. something I was curious about because you have the wrestling skills down, you have the charisma, you have the mic skills. Uh, so I was wondering, though, oh, just tell me <laughs> more. Tell me more. <laughs> No, it's true it's true though you really do um Thank and you. that's now so I was wondering if we were to go back to your first match ever how did it go did it go according to plan can you even remember what the first one was um okay so this is a f- so for me uh I always said so my I would say my debut was uh it was Kelvin Hall it was in Glasgow can um it felt like 2000 it was 2000 people 2000 people in the crowd um, Scottish Wrestling Alliance, which was the company I started with and trained with, um, and they really gave me my start. With the, so that at that point I was um, managing, I was valeting um, Demo and um, our best friend, tag team partner uh, Scotty, the Butcher Renwick, um, and I was the valet for their opening tag match. And then there was supposed to be a mixed tag. There was a mixed tag. Um, it was meant to be match number three or four. And the girl got, um, she got, she couldn't make it. Like she got um, stuck in really bad 
um I don't know, I think it was really bad traffic. She got stuck and she could I couldn't see where this is going. <laughs> and they were like they came up to me and they were like and because they brought someone, they brought sweet Soraya and Ricky Knight, um Soraya's um Paige's mum and dad. Um they brought them all the way from England for this mixed tag match. Um so they were like they were looking for girls and they were like they saw me and they were like, Do you got your wrestling gear with you? And I when I started valleying, um, you know, I'd always worn my wrestling you know, my boots and I had my little tartan skirt on with the black shorts underneath and a sports Nike Adidas top. I, I don't know if it was Nike or Adidas. And I just looked and I was like, well, I'm wearing it. Um, and so they basically th- threw me in the match number four, um, mixed tag match. And Sweet Soraya, Ricky Knight, I think I did, I recalled doing a baseball slide and a schoolboy. Um, they really, they really looked after me a lot. Um, and my partner, uh, Magic, his, his name was, um, they both really looked after me. Um, but I always like to say that's my debut because it sounds kind of cool, like in front of 2,000 people. Totally. But I actually, like, it, it's almost a small white lie because I also wrestled a match before then in a battle royale in a car park in Govan, Glasgow, a couple of weeks maybe like a month previous. So technically that was my debut in a car park. Um, I think I was called, uh, I think I was Bridget at that point. Was I Nikki Storm or was I Bridget? I don't know. At one point it was Bridget and one point it was Nikki Storm. Um, so there's, a, there's the, the, you know, those were the, the first matches. So when I was coming along, I, that, I was that Valley manager character. Um, like I was a huge fan of uh, Mickey James. Absolutely love Mickey James. Still do to this day. She's amazing. Uh, okay. So for me, I, I, I like you know then I kind of she inspired me a lot so I think when you see the if you went back and watched some of my earlier matches you would see very bubbly very you know I did cheerleading for like a very 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 short stint at, when I was at Glasgow University so that was kind of like little bubbly kind of cheerleader very um you know kind of you know very like you know not too far away from you know the personality you kind of see um with, with now so I was kind of that bubbly and excited and then uh I got lucky enough that when I wrestled for Shimmer in Chicago uh Berwyn Illinois technically I don't know if it's Chica- I don't know if it's Chicago it's just outside Chicago my geography is terrible <laughs> and uh they actually you know allowed me you know I don't know what maybe I did an interview or something and I think they they maybe saw oh she can she can cut a promo because the you know the at our wrestling school uh, our you know demo he had taken over the school um and he was always having us do promo practice and talking on the microphone so we had been like really it'd been drilled into us like you have to know how to talk you have to be able to cut promo you have to talk on the microphone the in-ring ability isn't um it's important but you need to be able to like talk or have you know and be able to be like, a character yeah you know and it's and it's so true and so then shimmer actually was the pretty much the first place to kind of let me have a live microphone and then pretty much it was every single match before that before the bell rang I would cut a promo and so then from there I think I started to get more microphone time across different promotions and I would practice a lot and put a lot of videos up on YouTube I'm just really trying to be better and get better um so I think that was a very long process um you know I started I think I I'm, uh, got to WWE about eight years into my career so for those eight years it was just spent constantly trying to progress and make mistakes and learn from them <laughs> get better um um as a promo but also as a wrestler and also like as a person and you grow and I think that's what I loved about traveling was because um I could really, I really had a lot. I got some really cool, unique life experiences and just, you know, got to be like, a, you know, got grew up kind of in the industry. And um, so, yeah, so I think it was, everything was a gradual process. Like, but I can still, it's so funny because I can go back and see shades of like what I'm doing now. So it's, it's still yeah. funny. Old it's habits. Like it's, <laughs> it's like you're still carrying that torch from before. There's still a part of you that's, you know, just on a much, much wider and bigger stage now. So (laughs) 
That's amazing, though. It really is. I mean, I was also looking back not only at old promos and, like, even oh, the- old, <laughs> old gear of yours, but you posted these throwback photographs from 2008, which is actually when you met Killian. So, yeah. I mean, when you when you look back at those photos, and now, obviously, he's your husband, um, what kind of ran through your mind? Because the gear is different. You're both obviously younger. It's, like, the beginning of the rest of your life, in a sense. It was very cute. So I think it was David Wilson who, he was actually in charge of taking a lot of photos in Scotland and he would let us use his photos. Um, We would use them to like send to other promoters to try and get work. Um, We would post them on our Facebooks or was it Bebo? I don't know. No, I don't know. (laughs) MySpace? No, it wasn't MySpace. I think it was Facebook um, at that point. Um, And he, you know, would take promo pictures of us and uh, and so he, he started to, sharing a lot of throwback photos on um twitter the other day there uh, i think it was friday i want to say and it was and then i realized i had so many old photos of in fact it's actually here yeah, i have like so many like it's like a photo book of like um oh, that's awesome. you know uh, david and elaine his lovely beautiful wife actually made this little memory book for me and demo when we moved from america it uh, sorry moved to america from scotland so it was actually really nice looking back. And then, you, as you said, you see the gear. Uh, you see, oh, man, I used to I used to wear a lot of fake tan. Um, and you, you, you're, like, I used to have highlights in my hair. Um, yeah. And you, and we both, yeah, we're both, like, we're babies. Like, I was 18, 19. He was 21, 22. Um, and you're just like, oh, we're so young. And it was just, but it's so funny because, like, we, uh, he, we, we met at the same wrestling school and then the person who was running the wrestling school, uh, they had to kind of leave the school. Um, they had to, you know, they concentrated on other things. So Damien actually had to take over the school, but at that point we were already dating. So we had to kind of transition from being like peers, kind of, or co, to then he was my trainer. And so we had to really learn how to um, separate, se- separate certain Personal things. Life. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I think that was a that was that I was that's a huge um, I think that played a big part um, and even just um, because he it, it was it was a funny like it showed like I don't know it's hard to explain um I learned a lot from that because you really have to learn how to separate everything and you have to you know as soon as you walk through that door at the wrestling school you're a trainee. And, you know, he was your trainer. So it didn't matter if he hadn't done the dishes, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I actually learned a lot. Um, and that was a really important experience. And it was a, an important process for both of us. Let's get into how crazy uh, quarantine has been and how I know a lot of your time has been spent watching television. You mentioned mm-hmm. Netflix, Amazon Prime. I feel like you got all of the, all of the devices oh, and streaming services. <laughs> we've got Hulu, we've got Disney Plus, um, you know, and it's... Uh, for us, we we were watching. Uh, we were watching. We, we're still watching X Files. So we're trying to get okay. through X Files. We're on season nine. So we're midway through season nine. Um, so X Files has been very good. Uh, what else did we watch? We watched a lot. We watched. Um, we watched Birds of Prey, which was oh, okay. awesome. I love that movie. That was great. I love her. I love Matt Margot Margot Robbie. Is that how you pronounce that? Uh, sure. Harley Quinn. Yeah. The girl who plays Harley. It's, and it was, so Birds of Prey was really good. And uh, we've been, my friend introduced me to Netflix party, which is you set it up um, on your phone. And like you have a live chat as you're watching a movie. So me and my friend, we both love really bad horror movies. Um, so we choose a bad horror movie and then we're just typing in the chat. So, um, you know, we're, it's been... Um, and you know, we're trying to like, you know, I said to you as well, you know, we've been walking and going outside. Um, and it's good where we live because where we can walk, we can still be very, um, you know, if we walk by someone, it's very easy to just cross the street and just still be practicing that physical That's distancing. Because, um, you know, it's, 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 um, it's a very uh, trick. It's a hard time um, for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people are going through a lot right now. Um so you know we 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 we've been watching the news just to kind of try and stay informed um and it's just it's just it's i have a lot of respect for the people that uh the healthcare professionals the you know delivery people the delivery drivers the people that are still going to work in the groceries and the pharmacy and it's just it's it's it makes you feel very small because you're like wow these people are like actual superheroes instead of 
watching the, an Avengers marathon. Um, <laughs> actually, superheroes. Um, so Absolutely. I just am very gracious that we can um, grateful that we can you know we have a roof over our heads and we have a bed to sleep in. Um, so we're just trying to be just enjoy this time with one another um, because obviously you know we, when we're touring and things um, we there's you know a lot some weeks where we don't we're really busy each other. <laughs> So it's been nice. We're just trying to enjoy each other's company and just enjoy being with each other. Um, and uh, I've been studying like my essays during a few weeks. I've been trying to do that. So we're doing stuff with school, but just just trying to stay focused on what's really important. And like I said, I mean, there's just people out there that just they're they're helping us so much, and they're just you know they're they're going to their jobs every day and their delivery or pharmacy or the healthcare professionals like. And then I'm obviously trying to stay in touch with my family in Scotland because, you know, I'm very far away. So I'm trying to, like, see how it is over there and, like, you know, they're, how they're coping and dealing with it. So it's it's a weird, it's a hard time right now. And like I said, I'm just grateful to have a roof over my head and a bed to sleep on. <laughs> no, it's definitely the positive way to look at it. There's so much craziness going on. And I think you're right. As long as you do kind of try to stick to the rules that are set in place and everything, hopefully... You know, it'll go by and we can kind yeah. of get back to some normalcy. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I do want to, I know it's really serious, but it's also something that kind of has to be spoken about. I'm always curious what people are doing to get through it because it feels like the days are a lot longer and you don't have that go, go, go. Because with our schedules, especially yours, you're yeah. always used to not being home. A lot of people I know can still work from home using their computer. So I'm just so happy that that exists um you know that people are still able to work from home and so I love the fact that you can still keep producing content um and I, I'm just I'm, I'm really anything and that's why I was happy to talk to you today I was like yeah we'll get if anything we'll get a good little sing-along you know we'll get some dancing um, <laughs> but I love how I completely digress and you talked you were trying to talk to me about movies and tv and I completely digressed um so what else did we watch so we've been watching uh oh I've been watching Oh, it was uh, America's Book of Secrets. It's on Netflix. Um, I think I've seen that one. Can, yeah, and there's another one, like Conspiracy Theories. Uh, and, yes, yeah, so I've been watching them. And we, you know, we like uh, Law, Law and Order. And there's always reruns of Law and Order. So, you always. know, like, uh, always, always. You, you, you'll never fail to find a Friends or a friends or law and order seinfeld law and order <laughs> you know, first, i've never seen seinfeld i've never seen demo kind of introduced me to fraser and fraser was funny i like fraser made me laugh uh, we got done with the sopranos which was amazing love the sopranos um and i'm trying to think i want to get we 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 did up to season 14 of supernatural um but they're airing season 15 <laughs> i was 14 seasons i mean i i mean, I love Supernatural, but I can't wait to see how they wrap it up because season 15 is our last season. So I'm very curious how they're going to wrap things up. But we're also one of those couples that, like, once we start a show, we don't really start another show until we're finished the one we're watching. What would you say, just for one last question here, what would you say is the ultimate, your favourite one of all time? Oh, God. Because I know you guys are just in it. I think every interview I, I came across, you were talking television. I'm like, all right, we, we got to get in it. So, uh, so it was kind of, I would say Breaking Bad or The Sopranos, but for me, I didn't really like, I started to like dislike some stuff about The Sopranos as time went on, whereas Breaking Bad was just so consistent to me. So I might have to say Breaking Bad, but then... I was over, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I feel like changed my life. So like when I was growing up, and it was such a good escapism, like wrestling was. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was like such a huge. Uh, it was escapism, and it was as a as a woman, as a teenager, grown up. It just changed my life. So I will always have that. Even the grown up Nikki would say Breaking Bad, um, but nikki in general thinking of like childhood and thinking of being a teenager and a young woman young adult i think buffy the vampire slayer, slayer is just one of those it's just one of those tv shows it's just it's oh it's incredible oh, it's even just as soon as i heard you mention buffy i'm like 
Yes, like I, I don't know why, but it's one of those things I binge watch with my sister. We've watched the series. I don't even know how many times over. And you just want to be Buffy Summers because she's so confident at times. Then when she has her hardships, you know, you feel for her. And it's, it's, very, it's very real, even though it's completely not real at all. <laughs> but it was, I think it's real to like, it was like she was very flawed. Like, you know, she did have flaws. And, you know, this. I always loved Faith. Uh, the other, the Faith was yeah. like, you know, she was, you know, so hugely flawed. So it was just, even though it wasn't real, because obviously it wasn't real, it was a TV show, I think it, was, it still explored a lot of, re, um, like, issues and a lot of the stuff was, like, metaphorical. Um, so I think it was a really important show for women. Um, really important show. Just like Charmed was. I think Charmed is pretty much in the same boat of that. Um, Charmed was very much, you know... Like, I have two sisters, so Charmed, you know, struck chords with me on sisterhood. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was, a, it was an important show. Do you only have one sister or do you have? One. She's two one. years younger than I am. She's a nurse. Oh. So, yeah, so she's been crazy busy. Kind of like how we were talking about that earlier. She's been super busy with work and going in every day and just taking care of people. So, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Give her a hug from me. That's awesome. I will. <laughs> amazing like I said the people that are st- like going to work every day it's just they're just it's, it's so inspirational and these are like real life people like so yeah like the real life superheroes it's it's cool to watch as you mentioned like binge watch Avengers films but <laughs> knowing oh, they're actually among us <laughs> yeah we watched uh oh what did I watch? We, we we watched Endgame and Infinity War and I was just like though I mean they are like easily in my top five movies of all time like oh. they're so good they're just such a good <laughs> pair of movies and I couldn't I can't even pick one I just see them as one big movie because I can't I refuse to choose between them I feel like we could literally talk about films for a very long time. honestly I'm such a chatterbox and I like I'm sorry if I didn't even get let you get a word in ways. No, so please. I'm Don't such be. a chatterbox so I literally I know I could talk for hours and hours on end about movies and tv so I'll uh, I'll uh I'll, uh, I'll finish, you, do not, I'll finish there. you do not have to suppress anything for me like sometimes I'll do interviews and the person's not super chatty and it's almost like you're talking to yourself so it's absolutely wonderful when the other person likes ranting and they're a chat box <laughs> and it, it makes my job so much so much better so no, thank you thank you so so much for taking the time for hopping on here I know your fans my fans they're going to be so excited when I even send out this little thumbnail so just thank you so much congratulations once again Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. And yes, let's let's do this again. Like, we'll, we'll uh, with so much more movies and TVs we can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many more. We should have like a weekly thing going on, just mm-hmm. a, a tele talk. Movies and TV. I've, you know, I don't even know what we're going to. I'm trying. I will look at the Equalizer Two is next on my list with Denzel Washington. Okay. I know my dad loves the first one. I don't even remember what it was about, but <laughs> I remember that, that really title. Good. If you like Denzel, you'll love it. <laughs> okay. Well, everybody, this has been the incredible Nikki Cross. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>